Oh, there you go. Great. Okay. So welcome everybody. Uh, we are uh, here for the third Thursday monthly briefing of the uh, on the the use of twenty four seven instant feedback on writing using Accurita, which is the system that we have developed here at UTS, and integrating it into your teaching. And I'm joined today by Sheree Lucas, who will be co-presenting. Um, uh, from her experience as an educator and academic in the School of Pharmacy. She'll be introducing her work in a bit. Also joined today by Lisa Lim, who is the postdoctoral research fellow in automated feedback here at the Connected Intelligence Center. And uh, she will be supporting um, academics and teaching teams um, going forward in conjunction with myself and Cherie. So um, here's the plan. Over the next hour, we want to really just give you an overview of what is Accurita and, and, and what is it trying to do and what is it not doing? Because of course, we're all familiar with spelling, grammar and plagiarism checking already. Um, but Accurita is, is a complement to those. We're going to introduce you to three examples of how Accurita is being used here at UTS uh, in law to teach HDR students, or in fact, any other student who is writing some kind of abstract or summary, executive summary, uh, to summarize their work. And uh, the third context is critical reflection on practice, which of course is extremely important here at UTS, mm -hmm. as we move to more authentic forms of learning and getting students into the workplace. And uh, Sheree Lucas will be talking about that. <clears throat> There'll be the chance to do some hands-on activity if you want to, and then ask questions, or we can, it'll just be a Q&A opportunity to, uh, to discuss the different ways in which one might use Accurita as part of your teaching practice. Okay, and finally, this is just the, uh, um, the conversation opener, uh, and we would expect you to want to follow up with us later to figure out what the next step might be for you. Okay. All right. So first of all, the status of Accurita is that it is a UTS wide deployed tool. It's part of the learning technology ecosystem here at UTS. Now uh, it's been in pilot for four to five years, but in May was officially announced to all students. Uh, you can see the opening to that story there that was sent out to students um, as part of um, the, the weekly news for them. It's also linked into the, the online study support portal that UTS provides to students um, uh, to, to make them aware that this is now available to them as part of the whole writing support um, service that UTS provides through the library, through HELPS, um, through um, the Graduate Research School for PhD students. So this is not the end of human support for writing. This is just a new member to the family, which as we'll explain, has some strengths and weaknesses that complement what people are able to do. Accurita comes out of a long-term R&D project here at the Connected Intelligence Center. And uh, here's the link to it. All these slides will be available afterwards, of course. And that's where we, we um, you know, basically set out the research agenda and you can find publications there of the peer reviewed evidence that we have been gathering over the years about the kinds of response that staff and students have to automated feedback on writing. Um, and uh, because it's a new kind of tool, you know, we, we've kind of got used to machines being smart, and smart enough to correct our spelling or our grammar, even though it doesn't always get that right, right? And then we choose to ignore bad suggestions. Um, and uh, we're used to it now having a go at detecting plagiarism, and we know it doesn't always get that right either. Um, but now AI is developing and able to detect new kinds of patterns, which are certain hallmarks of good academic writing. And that's what students struggle to get right. Writing is hard, uh, as any of us who have tried to teach students writing, whether it's at undergrad level all the way through to PhD level, it's a constant process of learning how to write at a different level and in a different way and to make your thinking visible. 
which is one way of thinking about what Acker Writer is trying to get you to do. Make your thinking visible by leading the reader through your stance, your position to certain ideas. That's what academic writing is all about. Um, and uh, students just have to learn that. Some of them have picked it up in school, um, others haven't. In fact, we are talking with schools about Acker Writer and um, the extent to which it might overlap with, you know, the HSC um, curriculum and so forth here in, uh, in, in New South Wales. Okay, so writing is hard and guess what? Feedback is critical. No surprises there. We know how important that is for all kinds of learning, but students need ideally precise, timely feedback on how they can make their thinking visible or more visible. Um, but guess what? It's humanly impossible to provide 24 seven instant feedback to all students um, instantly. You know, it's just not possible. This is where machines fill a niche, a gap. We're not going to be making anybody unemployed by introducing this kind of technology because this is this, you know, constant feedback on draft after draft after draft at any time of the day or night is not something any academic is putting up their hand for, right? Okay, we've all got and I think, quite enough to do. I think the catchphrase is any time of the day or night. Those of us working towards a deadline, it could be God knows. <laughs> Right. The hours. <laughs> so that's, that's it. Exactly. Okay. So this is the niche that we think machine intelligence now can, can make a contribution to filling. Okay. So Akariter, it's a website. You just go in and sign in with your UTS credentials, gives you instant formative feedback in red letters, not grading. We are not grading here. This is formative feedback on your drafts to try and improve what you finally submit, which of course will be graded and assessed by a thinking intelligent human being um, and we are focusing on the rhetorical moves in writing and we'll explain what what those are in just a moment and finally we're dealing with two writing genres as we call them one is called analytical writing um, essays research papers the introduction or the abstract you're writing an argument you're typically writing in the third person you are you are putting ideas together in order to, sh to, to make a case of some sort. Um, uh, and then there's reflective writing, which is really rather different, as you will see from the examples that uh, we'll be seeing later on from the Masters of Pharmacy students that Cherie teaches. You're writing in the first person. It's like a learning journal or a reflective essay, or perhaps it's a project review reflecting on what went well and what didn't. Um, and we're, we're, you're doing completely different things here, which are very different from writing an essay on a persuasive argument. It's about how am I changing? What am I not sure, uh, sure, not sure about? What, what took me by surprise? Um, how am I developing as a professional? Um, so a completely set, different set of moves. Okay, well, let's unpack what we mean by rhetorical moves. And yeah, please jump in any moment if anything's not clear. Okay, so. Uh, according to Swales, who is one of the leading academics who studies writing, uh, a rhetorical move is a discausal or rhetorical unit that performs a coherent communicative function in a written or spoken discourse. Okay, so to translate that, basically, what you're communicating your stance with respect to some ideas or facts. Um, uh, and these are the sorts of things we're talking about. Okay, on the left here we have the kinds of rhetorical moves that that we these are the labels we use in Akariter that play the following functions. Right, these are the functions that Swales is talking about up here, raising a question or missing knowledge, and we might use a, a form of words like "little res research exists on dot dot dot." Establishing some consensus or background knowledge. Recent studies indicate talking about contrasts or disagreements or tensions or inconsistencies, something which is obviously very important in the world of ideas and showing that you're getting a grip on your field. You know, this approach fails to address would be a, a classic academic set of, you know, a phrase to signal what you're, you know, that, that there's a problem of some sort. Emphasis, you know, we might talk about significant something. Um, 
claiming novelty or improvement. You know, uh, academics and researchers, of course, want to talk about whether their approach is better in some way than somebody else's work. Uh, you can't just say, my approach is better. You have to say in a particular kind of way. Uh, it's a new approach. We have improved precision of the, of the, the algorithm. Uh, this provides a superior account of the data. Whatever the field is, there are different ways of saying Basically, we think we've made some progress. Expressing surprise, that's often interesting in academia, something being unexpected. Talking about trends, growths or patterns, that might be trends in the literature, trends in your data, um, you know, but something is growing worldwide. And then we have this sort of slightly different category called summary statements, which are really where you tell the reader what this piece of writing is going to do. You know, we show how, dum de dum de dum In this paper, we will argue. To summarize, this essay has proposed. Those are statements up to the reader about the piece of writing as opposed to about the literature in some sense, okay? And they, they help keep the reader on, you know, uh, oriented and able to follow your moves you know, in the next section, we will. Okay, so these are just these nice connectives that, that, that keep the reader engaged and, and, and figuring out where you're taking them. Okay, so you'll see these coming up in the examples we show. Um, now, in the world of education and teaching, we talk about assessment and designing student tasks. Um, and those are, that's familiar language. In the world of analytics and AI, we talk about features in the data and designing feedback and user interfaces. So we want to bring the blue and the red together. And what we're going to be explaining is how these cogs can be synchronized so that they all drive in the same direction and create a coherent teaching and learning experience. What you get if you don't do that is that, for example, you're using one set of terminology when you're talking to your students about your write, their writing, but Akariter is using completely different language and the students can't join it up. Or you've told the students what the assessment rubric is and how they're gonna be graded, and the students can't for the life of them see why Akariter's feedback is gonna help improve their grade. Okay, so we've just got this mismatch. So the process that we're gonna be talking about today, and this is the sort of methodology we have developed over the last five years is to how, how we work with you as educators to ensure that there is that alignment. And we'll be explaining how Akarita can be integrated into student activities and how the user interface and the feedback it gives can even be modified in different ways to ensure that the language you're using to get the kinds of writing you want from your students is meshing with what Akarita is able to do. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at what this actually looks like in practice. This is from work that was done by Shibani Antoinette as part of her PhD here at UTF, working with Pip Ryan largely in the law faculty. Um, we provide a quick start guide, which you can give to your students just to get them up and running, explaining uh, what, what Akariter is uh, and, and reminding them of, of why, why they, uh, they should be using it. Um, we would typically expect you to, to run a briefing of some sort. Uh, you know, these days, of course, it might be in Teams or Zoom, but uh, in the good old days, it was even face-to-face. -face. Maybe we'll, we'll be doing that again soon. But, you know, it's just a session which says, here's why learning how to do this kind of thing is important for becoming an XYZ or for, you know, uh, learning how to research in this topic. Okay, so that we have these resources that we can give you and you can customize them. And when the student pastes in their draft and clicks give me feedback, they get three tabs, which, which look like this. Here's the first one. It's, it's where Akariter has essentially got its color highlighter pen out and annotated the sentences that it recognizes as one or more of these types, these rhetorical moves. Okay, so it's, it's, it's flagged this as a T for a trend or tendency with the increasing popularity of internet enabled, blah, blah, blah. Okay. There's a tendency to assume da, 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 da. Okay. So trend, 
They're talking about some kind of trend of some sort. Okay. The 2012 review does not address the role of courts in serving the legal needs of the community, does not address. Okay. It's classified that as a C contrasting idea, attention or an insight of some sort. This omission questions something. So questioning something, another signal that it's, there's a problem of some sort, there's a contrast. Okay. And then we have a nice green sentence down here. This essay will discuss, which is a signposting sentence for the reader to understand what's coming. Um, okay. On the second tab here is our feedback messages, which are uh, just textual statements um, back to the, the student, which says, summarizes what a writer could or couldn't see in the writing. First of all, but note that we have this sort of warning at the top, which, rem which reminds the student that Akarita is not perfect, doesn't understand writing the way people do. It's just a stupid machine in many ways. And we want the students to feel that they can push back if they don't agree. Okay. So if you think it's wrong, if you, uh, if you can defend your writing, that's fine. You know, the main point is that you've gone beyond thinking about spelling, grammar and plagiarism. Okay, so it says it looks like you're missing a background move, um, a move that establishes what is the sort of consensus knowledge within the field. Okay, that may be fine, but um, an archetypal uh, piece of text, maybe, maybe, maybe the student just didn't paste that in, in this, in this bit of, for this bit of feedback. Maybe they have done that, but somewhere previous to pasting in this paragraph, they want to check. Or maybe it would be a good thing to add, you know, some using, using constructions such as this. And there aren't any E's, there are no E's. And uh, so the, uh, the system is saying, well, maybe you'd like to emphasize something in your essay, such as, um, uh, you know, these, these kinds of constructions. Again, it doesn't mean the student's wrong. These are suggestions for engaging the reader and signaling what's most important. And then in the examples tab, this is where you as the uh, academic can put specific examples that are relevant to this particular writing assignment you've set, uh, where we've got an example of legal sentences, uh, which map to the assessment rubric that has been given to the students and that maps to these uh, sentence types in Accurator. Okay, so again, here we are driving home the message that this is relevant to your assignment. Uh, using this is going to help you if you take on board the feedback. Okay. Can I just ask, the feedback is um, uh, in its entirety, so that the feedback that we just saw, it's read the entire paper. It doesn't go page by page, right? How does the... Yeah. It, yeah, it's it's read it's read everything that's been pasted in. Okay. okay. Um, so you can, I mean, if you were to paste in a huge document, um, you know, it might take quite a while. But typically, yeah. if Sections. we're talking about student essays, you know, um, or, of them. or a yeah. section or an abstract, it's going to be pretty quick. Yeah. Um, uh, you can have an experiment and see. Okay. All right, then part of the work has been to say, well, okay, well, that's cool, but how would I include that in a whole activity for students? And this was work that uh, was done with the law faculty where, you know, they, there's an introductory reading and there's a video. Um, then you learn how to match Akarita's rhetorical moves to the rubric. Uh, I'll show you some examples of what that looks like. Um, you could look at a sample essay with some revisions. You get you get the chance to assess um, a sample text of low quality. Uh, then you put it into Akarita and see what Akarita thought about it. Then you discuss it with your peers. Uh, then you might make some further changes. <clears throat> um, and then afterwards, we we gave a feedback survey to the students and and provided a guide for using Akarita going forward. Okay, now this is not, we're not telling you this is how you must do it. It's just an example of a writing workshop that was run. Okay. Um, as part of this uh, experiment, this is one of the first experiments that we did with Akarita back in about 2016. 
um, 17, we, we created a, uh, the ability for students to drag and drop these different um, blocks against the relevant section. And so if they thought that something was drawing together themes against that, then they dragged it on there, but no, they got that wrong, that went red. So it was a sort of little drag and drop activity. Um, and um, as you'll see later on, we have a version of this now in the UTS open module that's available where you can use these H5P interactives to engage with different aspects of, um, uh, of, of, of these rhetorical moves and, and practice. So you, so you really understand the language that Akarita is speaking when you get to use it. This was just a, a piece of, uh, just a Word document that the academic prepared which showed how you could, you know, just using track changes, insert particular words that sort of signaled to the reader more clearly what was going on. So this was just uh, using a, a, a tracking track changes in words. It's very familiar to students, just to get, just to show the students uh, what a, a piece of work might look like after they'd improved it. Um, this was a, a little form that we created. Um, and uh, one could imagine creating this in, you know, Microsoft Forms or Google Forms, where you give them a little exercise to do, you know, we've given you a, a sample bit of writing, what would you grade it as and, and why? And how confident are you at the moment? So uh, a little exercise there. Um, and then after using Akarita and making some changes, again, we got them to think about how they would rate the changes and why. So you don't have to do this, but you know, this is a way of you know, creating some little interactive forms and activities that scaffold the use of the tool. This was uh, an activity where they discussed with a peer the feedback they'd got. Now we know from a lot of research that students often, sometimes they don't like to criticize each other, right? It's, you know, they're my friends. I don't want to really give you a hard time about your writing because I know I'm not very good either. But if we've got Akarita, as a dispassionate machine giving feedback, then if it's been critical of me, um, you know, my, my, my student peer could discuss that. They might agree with the machine, uh, in which case the machine's kind of opened up the conversation uh, and, and we can have a discussion and I might recognize that I've got some weaknesses because it's not my, it's not my, my mate who's telling me that my writing's rubbish. The machine's already told me that, but the peer discussion is just to open up that conversation. Okay. And then a little survey at the end about how, how helpful they found it. And um, as an educator, as an academic, um, if you want to, to work with us and turn your use of Akarita into some action research, that can lead to joint publications. Um, and you know, we have uh, ethics approval that covers the use of you know, certain surveys and uh, focus group methods and stuff where we can actually assess what the students thought about this. Um, and uh, there's, there's quite a few joint research papers that have now been published um, from our, our trials. Okay, then if we switch to accounting, I'll just show you how, how radically the, the third tab changed. Um, now we're talking about business students analyzing an organization's objectives and strategy. So it's not law. And so this tab is completely different it's all about this particular assignment and all the examples are about analyzing Nike or Lululemon or, or some other company, uh, right? Just to, just to make it relevant to the students. Okay. Uh, one thing that we found was sometimes the feedback just sort of goes over the student's head uh, and they don't really engage with it. So um, a really, um, uh, effective uh, measure was to to tell them to click the PDF button and print out the summary that it, which is just it just uh, prints out a PDF of all those highlighted sentences and they said right get your pen and pay, get your pen out and we want you to annotate that document and tell us where you agree or disagree with that writer and um, and then go and make your changes again so it just got you know we, again create an activity scaffold the reflection and state why you think it maybe it should have highlighted uh, why didn't it highlight this sentence i thought that was a good sentence you know or why has it done this um and um, the students who did that um we found had it had an effect on their overall improve, improvement of their of their uh, submission okay 
an example of how the accounting academics plan the, ac the activities through, through the semester. Um, you know, you can do everything from a, a one hour workshop to asking students to use it in their own time to really threading it through your, your, your session so that it's a, a bit of a red thread that really gets them thinking about their writing in more detail. It all depends on how much time you've got, how much enthusiasm you have and how cramped your curriculum already is. Okay, any questions from, from those examples before I, I move on? No? Okay. <laughs> okay, here's a slightly different example, which um, is all about um, PhD writing, HDR writing, or, you know, it could be an honours student writing their project report, or a master's student, of course, when they're writing a, a thesis. The creator research space model is used widely in teaching PhD students all over the world to how, you know, some, a set of classic moves that you make. Uh, establishing a research territory where you, you basically say, this topic is terribly important, pay attention, please. Then there's always a but, we have a problem. You know, we don't understand how to do this. There's a huge debate about that. There's you know, uncertainty about the relevance of the next thing, whatever it might be. And then finally, but I've got something to say about that. I've got a contribution to make. So it's a classic sort of set of moves. And so in Akarita, this was a PhD work by Sophie Abel, who is uh, in the process of just getting that written up. We, we group the different sentence types under moves one, two, three. Uh, we, we wanted students to think about moves one, two, three, and then we, we group these underneath it. Okay. And on the left here, you can see we've, we've, we've uh, shown those. In fact, we've got four moves here. It's a slightly different scheme, uh, slightly modified from, 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 from cars. And you can see we've got a move one here. It's now widely accepted that dum de dum de dum. Um, there's no statement about the purpose of the paper here. Uh, uh, in fact, um, well, in fact, there is, uh, we present is a summary move, but because it's, it's an even more important kind of move is to show the results or findings we've colored it yellow. And then the research problem, the big, but was that dum de dum de dum is a critical challenge. Uh, dum de dum de dum are not necessarily effective. So Akarita has picked those up and said, Hmm, sounds like problems to me. Uh, if the student wants to see the details, they can click on that and it expands out the key at the top here and shows the, the constituent sentence types that sit underneath it. Okay, and, uh, and they would see all of these types in the annotated text here. So this is like the simple version and then they can have the really elaborated version if they want. And again, we have what we call learning design patterns, which are ways of structuring a student activity through a do, analyze, reflect, change, reflect step here. And I won't go through all the details, but this is what we had students doing, PhD students in a face-to-face -face workshop as they first of all did work without Akarita and then Akarita was introduced. Okay. And that's a pattern that you could use and adapt for your own, um, your own purposes. Okay. And if you follow the link here, that would take you to the open course on writing an abstract, um, which, which has all these nice interactive exercises in it. Okay. All right. I'm going to hand over to Cherie now, who is going to talk about the work that she's been doing with her pharmacy students. Mm. Right. Uh, so Letitia, reflective writing is a little bit different to the analytical writing and um, we have to ask our students to reflect on their practice. So we send our students out every week and they need to reflect on their practice. So before I actually go through the workshop that I actually undertake with the students, I ask, they, they have a workshop with me about um, what reflective um, practice is, how important it is, and what are the sort of aspects of reflective writing. So clearly reflection is a graduate attribute. So that's one reason to reflect on something, but also <laughs> they need to reflect on their practice to see that they're actually doing things correctly doing yeah. and making sure that they're always improving that practice. 
So the first week, I actually uh, deliver the lecture on reflective practice and elements of reflective writing. And actually tomorrow, um, they're going to have the ACCA Writer Workshop. But prior to the first week, which uh, occurred in um, mid-February, they have been out in practice for four hours a week. And each week, um, I've asked them to keep a, an informal reflective log. So they have to think about an incident um, in the pharmacy and there are some prompt questions around that. So they have a little bit of preparation for tomorrow's workshop and they need to bring to the workshop a half a page about an incident, what occurred, how, what happened, their thoughts and feelings and so forth. Um, Simon, can we just maybe perhaps move? So obviously uh, there was a framework that was um, for ACCA Writer for Reflection. And this is the work of Gibson um, et al. Um, in 2017. And it involved um, three sort of areas in the narrative, context, challenge, and change, and the depth of each one of those. So we just might um, go through some of those aspects. Um, I, I mean, ACCA Writer is a formative feedback tool, but I also developed as part of my PhD, a reflective rubric which is um, being, it's been uh, drawn from the work of um, David Bowd and Mesro. So David Bowd's framework, um, the stages of reflection and mm -hmm. the categories of reflection with um, Mesro's um, framework in 1991 and Bowd's work in 1985. And there are elements to that rubric that sits very nicely with this, um, with ACCA writer under context, challenge and change and the elements of internalization, for example. So um, we might go to the next slide actually. Yeah. So the work that was for this particular framework, um, they looked at uh, the thoughts and feelings under context. In the rubric I developed, um, the, the, you have to return to the sort of incident or the event. And technically that is not really a reflective part is, but you need to return to that event to think about it. And the thoughts, feelings and reactions around that does relate to the context. So that is, that relates to part of the rubric that, um, that, uh, that underpins this sort of framework. Um, the challenges, self-critique, those sorts of things um, are, are developed in different stages and uh, the thoughts around why something occurred, um, what sort of, uh, what sort of uh, things were brought about? Were there any external issues to consider? Any other perspectives? They were all um, considered as part of that self-critiquing and challenge and thinking about one's beliefs, assumptions and approaches. So they're, they're quite challenging, and especially if someone has firmly held beliefs and challenges uh, with, with, with regards to that. Now the change is what I say to the students is the sort of like, you know, the gold standard, what, what are your changes in perspective? And ACCA Rider actually uh, tags the change up as a little prompt, a little um, triangle prompt. And the change could mean something as simple as uh, changing a different approach or learning from a different um, uh, approach to changing a strategy, perhaps thinking about a different perspective, um, understanding someone else's viewpoint, but also change um, also relates to what might be um, something in future um, that, they, that would influence their future behaviours. So looking at those as a learning opportunity. Uh, the next slide, please. So in Akarida, before the sentence, we have these nice little prompts. So we've got the sort of uh, the, circle, uh, the circle challenges, the blue um, squares and the triangle. And the blue squares are the initial thoughts and feelings about an event. Um, and then the challenges might be something like, um, you know, that, that they found something very difficult. Uh, it was challenging to think of someone else's viewpoint. Uh, they had a challenging conversation with a healthcare professional, for example. Um, the change could mean something along the lines that they had changed their way of doing something. Their, their thought processes and, and critically thinking about it and why an event occurred. So in terms of a reflective framework, there's, you know, there's some contention about what is the difference between reflection and critical reflection. And the literature has a, a lot of different um, uh, answers to that particular question. And, and because they're both um, unusual and very, um, uh, very complex constructs. 
what is what the literature posits is that critical reflection is a more disciplined process so understanding the why and unpacking the why something actually occurs so making sense of an event um, why did that occur thinking of the external influence for example uh, perhaps for for in the, in the instance of a, a pharmacy student Perhaps there was some um, cultural background um, and the reasons why someone wouldn't take a medication, or perhaps there was uh, some other external influences by the family or carers, for example. So it is understanding the impact of that why, and that is the critical reflective component. Uh, thanks, Simon, I'll just get to the next. So this is how it gets tagged up, which is quite nice. It actually um, has these nice coloured prompts. It actually uh, leads the students to all these different areas. You'll notice that one, um, the, when the words are bold, a deeper reflection personally applied, that's that kind of, kind of internalisation of that reflection. And some of the students think, oh, great, if I get everything bold in Akarida, I'm doing well. I said, if you get everything bold in Akarida, you haven't provided the context. You haven't provided the exemplar. And therefore, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, therefore, you've you've just provided a lot of words, <laughs> I think. Um, so, so they they've got to really have a balance between that. Um, we'll just go to the next slide, please. So this just gives you an example, oh. Leticia. So um, the green is self critique, the 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 green writing. Uh, you can see one particular sentence has the all three prompts there, which is, which is great. The one thing I do ask my students to do, and you might want to consider this, Letitia, is that I actually, as part of the outcomes of reflection, they have to think of the domains and standards of competence of their profession. And so we have five domains and 26 standards of competence, and they have to choose at least one of those for the incident and how they're working towards that. Yeah. So that is um, what I'm looking for in my rubric. Um, it's not necessarily outlined in Akarida, but this is where some of the outcomes of um, reflection uh, may differ between the professions. So you might want to consider some of those things. Yeah, that's great. Um, next, next slide, please. Now, this is the rubric I developed as part of my PhD, actually. It's been developed, um, it's been refined, I should say, over the years and has been published in a few publications. But it's also been tested for interrater reliability in three countries and four institutions. So you may want to have a look at that, the latest um, publication, the 2019 publication. Um, and it will, it, this work is, the rubric was de derived by Bowd and Mesro's work uh, primarily and the stages of reflection. Uh, just as a recap, the stage one, although I've got critical reflector, reflector and reflect, non-reflector at the top there for categories, it actually technically is just the recount part of the reflection. But I, say, I said to the students, look, if you, you need to go back to the incident. I need to know and understand. And that could be only a few sentences. For example, a 25-year-old came into the pharmacy, requests the morning after pill. And that could be simply as that. Yeah. Um, and and then then the incident will unfold. The conversation it's just situated, unfold. right? It's just it's a, a situated. situation, exactly. Yeah. So in some sort of chronological, clear um, order without judgment. So that's pretty. That's that's just the only recap um, and and recount, I should say, to this. Uh, so initially, when they start writing, you might you might get a lot of recounts. But once they understand the reflective process, the only recount should be the first few sentences. Now, stage two through to stage seven are not necessarily linear, according to Bowd's model. Um, and so students can go in and out of these stages um, throughout the process. It's not a linear um, uh, version of events. But what is very challenging for students is at stage five and stage six. So the validation is understanding your own beliefs, assumptions and approaches. But going further from that, is the appropriation stage. So why do you believe the way you do? And that's quite challenging because often it's about the way they've been brought up, conditioning. There's a whole lot of other elements there that um, students then have to challenge those beliefs and why um, and why why they actually do believe the way they do. And is that going to affect the outcome? So if you don't believe something and ethically you should be supplying something. Is that going to affect the outcome? And therefore, you, your, one of your outcomes could be that you're challenged, you've challenged your own beliefs, 
it's, it, was, it was difficult for you to um, accept that, but you needed to also look after the patient. And what are you breaching here, your ethical standards? So this is why the standards um, are under, underpinned in the outcomes of this type of ref reflection. I've also added readability and uh, accuracy down the bottom. That's not part of the reflective component. It's not in the actual publications, but uh, according to our um, attention to detail for pharmacists, I've added it there and they're quite big marks uh, allocated for that. So any, any grammar spelling, it's drug name, any of those sorts of things get a zero, um, an automatic zero in that component. So um, yeah, students, are, students have to sort of adhere to that as well. Um, Thank you. The next slide, please. So just how does this rubric kind of relate or map to Akarita? So I, work, I started working with Simon in 2016. The rubric that I had, which is now, has been more refined since then, but there was a rubric I did bring to the party prior to that in early 2016. But interestingly, the rubric elements, the, the elements of reflective writing um, are quite transferable across a number of different models. So whether you've got Mal, uh, Mesros or Bows or Kolbs or Johns or Gibbs or any of those models, you'll have very similar uh, elements when it comes to uh, reflection. So the way I present this with the students in how Akarita is aligned or mapped to the rubric, I, I talk about the different stages. And as the three pillars in Akarita are context, challenge and change, I've associated them with each of those stages so the students have a different understanding of where they come up. And also some of the depths, um, so internalization um, and those sorts of things are, uh, and are in different stages as well. And some of the prompts are in different stages. Mm -hmm. So they do have an understanding that this rubric, um, whilst this is your summative assessment and um, Accurate is a formative assessment, there are, um, significant elements that are aligned quite nicely with Akarita. Um, yep, so what, when we initially um, used this, we only had the initial prompts initially um, with the, the square and the circle and the triangle. And we did a, just some qualitative, some just very minor qualitative research um, projects, but just getting an understanding of what the students thought about this. And what they wanted was some written feedback so I sat down with the uh, Connected Intelligence team, um, that's the back of my head, and Ming and Simon, um, and we talked about in the context of pharmacy reflections, how, what sort of kind of written feedback would be used as prompts, so to prompt the students the um, thinking. So what have they missed in their reflection? And the feedback uh, prompts are based on a sort of a paragraph to paragraph um, status, not a sentence to sentence status. Mm -hmm. So it, it appears that you may have not included X, Y, Z, for example. It prompts them to think about their challenges in the event. So if they haven't got these things, um, it will prompt them now. And they're finding the prompts are quite um, helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Simon. The next one. Uh, yeah, so this just gives you an idea of the prompts. So obviously with all the nice ticks, they've done quite well, but there were a few prompts there. Perhaps consider introducing your first thoughts, feelings and or reactions to an incident or learning task within the first paragraph. Um, Akarata couldn't spot this within the first paragraph. So we, what we're saying is that maybe you've introduced it later on, but we really want to know what you really thought about something and how that thought or reactions or feelings have, have changed as a result. So um, that's why there would have been a lot of greens um, later in the paragraph. But, um, but initially there was a prompt to sort of um, open the paragraph with that. And at the end, while it appears that you report on how you would um, change or prepare for the future, you don't seem to have reported at first on what you found challenging. So some of the things that were missing, so they'll need to go back to their writing um, with that. And just to give you some examples, um, we've done a few papers together and I've been fortunate to be working with Simon and his team. Um, we've also now, uh, one that's just under, just been accepted, we're looking at Akarita to critique their research sort of technique and teamwork. And this is some of the work that's just come back. So it prompts you to developing those reflective ideas. Um, you can only go so far on your own. Uh, it makes you think of things that you normally would disregard. And because of the feedback was in front of me, you could see what I was thinking and building self-confidence because it seems to um, provide clarity of your thoughts and reasoning and a better understanding of self. 
and makes you discover things, not only about um, things that you're doing, but other things about yourself you really never thought of. Um, and the previous study, the original study we did in pharmacy, was, uh, it was basically a quantitative study. So they did a bit, um, pre-test and post-test you know, post -test about what Acarida might, might help them with or, or, or not help them with. And they had an anonymous feedback on Acarita. So you can have, use that for your own anonymous feedback uh, as well for your, for your subject. And one of them with a, a p-value um, suggested that they were more confident with um, writing submissions, at least by using this. And that was before the written feedback, that, that was before it was refined. And also um, in um, another paper that uh, was another collaborative project, it prompted me to follow through with the reflection to the last step of the process. I had written about my thoughts and feelings, discussed challenges, but had not followed through with reflecting on how this could lead to change. And that's kind of uh, letting them really critically think about the processes, their, their teamwork, how they're working through things and how they can improve their, um, their work environment. And ultimately, uh, I always, I've always said to the students, ultimately we want you to improve practice so whilst this is a learning tool, we want you to actually think about how you could improve next time you're out on practice. And that's the basis of that. Oh my okay. God, that's awesome. That's Thanks, great. Cherie. Um, yep, so a little bit of a deeper dive there just into one particular case of, uh, of, 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 of using it for the reflective writing. So we've just got like, you know, about uh, 10 minutes left max at the moment now. Um, so just to summarize, um, there are actually three ways of adapting Akarita, which map to the three tabs. Um, so Akarita, you know, it comes loaded with a whole bunch of different genres and, and they may be just fine for the, for the students and the kind of writing that you're dealing with. But there are some ways, and we provide you with this customization template document, um, to help you think through whether you would want to change anything in the feedback. Um, and there are different depths of adaptation available, but they also require different levels of effort from both you and the tech team. Hmm. So the, mo the summary here is that, you know, remember this third tab three, this is where you simply provide examples and any other mappings and explanations that tie it to the writing assignment. That's really easy to do. You can provide us with whatever you would like to say here, hopefully some examples that are relevant to the student and the subject, and we can just drop that in here. And you can rename that tab, you know, tips or examples or uh, right. resources, whatever you like. Okay. Tab two, right? Tab two, which is these feedback messages. You can change those messages, but as Cherie showed you, you have to think through all the different conditions. Yeah. Okay. You have to think, what if they've done this, but they haven't done that? Would I want to say something? What if they did these two things, but not in really the right order? I would want to say something. So you have to think through the combinations. And the template gives you an example of what that looks like for, for the abstract um, genre. And then finally, changing what actually gets marked up here is the most involved and detailed. We don't really have capacity to do that for everybody, but um, that's quite detailed technical work, but it's certainly possible. Uh, for example, you know, uh, changing, changing certain kinds of errors that keep cropping up because of the kinds of language in the field. Um, so for example, when we were working with the lawyers, you know, law students, of course, will be talking about evidence and arguments all the time, mm. because that's what you do in a court of law, but they might not necessarily talk, be talking about evidence and arguments in the literature yeah. and in the research field. And so it kept tripping up Akarita. Yeah. Right. So we had to, we had to sort of step in and, and make some changes, but that's quite detailed involved work. So there's a sort of sliding scale moving from tab three back to tab one. Okay. Okay. Now this is where we either give everybody the chance to get hands on with Akarita. Uh, you just go to akarita.uts uh, and log in uh, and have a little play. Uh, um, or you can explore that later. And now we've really just got the chance for you to ask us any, any sort of questions as we sort of wrap up at this point. I think because of time, we've got five minutes left. So we're really just happy to hear any thoughts you have, um, or any reactions. Um, skepticism is fine as well. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm, 
I think it's amazing. And I'm like, can I do a micro credential in this so that my writing gets better? I'm just thinking, what are the bites of learning um, I can do as a learner and academic and as also as a, as a teacher that my students can do? Because um, this is actually giving you sort of on the spot, hey, Tish, this is what you've done right, this is what you've done wrong. But is there um, any pre, do you know what I'm trying to say, any pre work we can do? before we actually write our first assignment to put into Hacker Writer. But I love it. I just, yeah. look, I think it's amazing. I can't wait to dump um, all of my assessments in there and see how I do the feedback and then the back end. It's, it's, it's an amazing tool. It's, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So there, there, are, there are resources um, on, there is a whole portal, a UTS portal. Which is that on? Has, yep. Yep, which is, which is just, uh, it's on that link, which you can follow. Um, uh, here are a couple of examples from the UTS Open Taster. This is a free thing. So you're asking, are there any micro credentials? Well, no, we haven't got a, a, no, just... a you know, a two credit micro, but there's, there's just a free taster you can go and try. Yeah. And I, I, I recommend you, you try that Absolutely. out. Yeah. Um, and you, here you can see the drag and drop exercise where you have to try and figure out, you know, which of these matches to which of these. Good. Sentences. You know, uh, uh, so there's lots of nice interactive multimedia there, uh, which is which which we think will be helpful. This is all tuned around abstracts, but we're dealing with all of the analytical moves, so it could be really relevant for other other kinds of writing and other mm -hmm. kinds of students. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one academic in the business school has taken this whole taster module. We've given her a copy, and she wants to modify it now for her business students. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be that ambitious. I'm just going to do it myself and see how I go and see if I can use yeah. it in the back end. But you think maybe next semester or what have you, you know, um, it's a great value add tool for students that want to, you know, don't just want to get through and just survive the program, but actually want to really um, improve their writing um, and thinking skills. Because I think writing's the output, but it also helps with your thinking skills, right? Because you're, mm. you're having to, to structure it. So I think it's um, definitely something I want to have a play. I think my next block isn't for another two weeks, but I definitely want to have a play with it. And it's definitely something that I want to put on the table for... Letitia, Letitia, it's actually quite good for the shy students as well who don't often yeah. put up their hands. So they they get they can have this work critiqued twenty four seven, and yeah. um, it's actually something that they they value because they're not really feeling like they have to put up their hand in front of everyone else and um, and have a chat about some of that work. So yeah. I can see that. Thanks for thanks for the link, Lisa. Yeah, I love it. I think it's, you know, it's it's excellent. I can't wait to. I've got a meeting now. Otherwise, I'd 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 keep you guys going. But I think it's um. So for myself, the best thing I can do is go to the link, and then have a have a play with um with the tool because yeah. yeah. I think um, I'll yeah. Um and uh one one thing to try is to just get a few examples of strong writing and weak writing. Yeah. and see whether Akarita can differentiate them. You know, um, if it can't, then it may be that you've got a particular kind of writing we just can't cope with. <laughs> um, I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, get back to us when you've had the chance to play and we'll yeah. be ha happy to, to discuss next steps. I love it. It might be a couple of weeks because this weekend I've got some, some, some play time, but um, I think it's, it's, it's a great tool. I, I, um, I'm really... What's the word? Overwhelmed with the amount of support that UTS actually offers um, for learners and for educators. It's 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 state of the art. Right. <laughs> so, okay. But... Thank you very much. Well, thanks for coming. Um, there were a few others who couldn't make it, but we've recorded it. And so, for anyone who's watching this after today, do get in touch if you want to discuss how you could add this to your teaching practice. Mm. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. Right. Thank you, Cherie, and thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone else. Cheers. Bye bye.